Well, this morning we're going to start this series on the Bible. So if you would take your Bible, I hope you have a copy of God's Word with you, and turn to Luke chapter 24. We're going to be in verses 13 through 32 today. As you're turning there, uh, I need to make something clear to you. If you do not already know this, there is an attack on God's Word. There's an attack on God's Word. In fact, there is always an attack on God's Word. If you trace it back all the way to Genesis there in the beginning when God created, when the devil came and he tempted Adam and Eve, the way in which the devil tempted them was by attacking the very Word of God and trying to manipulate God's Word and get them to give in to His temptation in which they did, and sin entered into the world. When we go there to Jesus' life here on the earth, His ministries in ministry here in the Gospels, uh, we see that Jesus was tempted by the devil. He was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness, and there the devil tempted him. And one of the ways in which the devil tempted him and tried to trick Jesus was by attacking the Word of God, taking God's Word, trying to ma manipulate it or, or say that it isn't what it says it is. And so there's always been an attack on the Word of God. The devil attacks the Word of God. I had a professor in seminary who, a student, uh, was t asking about what are some of the, the, the biggest things that, you're going, that he thought we might see as young pastors. And n knowing that um, our convention, the Southern Baptist Convention in the 70s and 80s, stood really strong and uh, won a battle for uh, the Word of God. We call that the conservative resurgence. This student said, you know, it, it seems like we're not going to have to worry about really going into a fight like that for the Word of God like, like, like you all had to do back in the 70s and 80s. And the professor said, no, that, that will be the main fight because there is always an attack on God's Word. In fact, just this last week, I met someone when I was out um, in town, and this person began to, to tell me that, they had a daughter, 16 years old, was homeschooled and already going off to college. And uh, so they began to look at various colleges that this, this girl was going to attend. And they, they're a Christian family. Um, and so they started to visit some Christian colleges. And one of those here, um, it, it's a college in Tennessee, they said they went to. And uh, as they were sitting there in the classroom, uh, the professor uh, made a statement. And the statement was referring to some of the epistles that Paul wrote that Paul just got it wrong. You see, there is an attack always on God's Word. So when we think about these things, it's important that we take time and remember how important God's Word is. And that's what we're going to do in the next two weeks. Today, I want to answer this question, how can I walk with Jesus? How can I walk with Jesus? If, if I were to give you the answer, and really the sermon sort of in a sentence today, this is what it would be. The Bible is all about Jesus. And as you walk through the Bible, you walk with Jesus. Jesus. Let me say that again. The Bible is all about Jesus. And as you walk through the Bible, as you walk through the Scriptures, as you take your copy of God's Word and you read them and study them and pray, you walk with Jesus. Now, turn your attention to chapter 24 of Luke. Let's read this together, starting in verse 13. Now, before I read, I'll say this is a lengthy passage, and the point of the passage is going to come more towards the end of it. But I believe it's important that we see the whole story here that's taking place, because it's going to make it come alive for us today. So verse 13 says, That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, 
And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and, and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should, sh should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Let's pray. God, we ask that you would honor the reading of your word today. Lord, help remind us and encourage us in the fact that the Bible is all about you, Lord Jesus. And God, you desire to walk with us as we walk through your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have this story. This is post-resurrection. Jesus has come out of the grave. And now Jesus is alive, and he is making appearances to disciples. And so here's these two these two disciples of Christ, and they are on their way out of Jerusalem on a road to Emmaus. And they're sort of distraught, and, and they even are sad because they're not sure exactly what's going on. They've obviously heard these testimonies that, that the, the tomb is empty, and people are saying Jesus is alive. Of course, they've not seen Jesus, and so they're just not really sure yet. And it says in this passage that none other than Jesus himself comes, and he walks on this road with these two disciples. But now here's what's interesting about the story. Did you catch it? It said Jesus had disguised himself. What that means is this. Jesus was walking with them, but they had no clue that it was actually Jesus who it was that was walking with them. Say, explain that to me. Sorry. Jesus can do things, okay? He can do things that I can't explain. But Jesus did this. He's walking with them, but they do not know that it is he who is walking with them. And so they begin talking with Jesus. And Jesus is, is asking them questions. And basically you get here to this point of the story there at the end where Jesus says to them, O foolish ones, do you not believe all that the prophets have spoken. He says it was necessary for Christ to die and to be raised back to life, for him to enter into his glory. And, and really, this is a key to, to our message today. It's this verse 27. It says, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them 
in all the Scriptures the things concerning Himself. They still did not know that it was Jesus who was with them. But Jesus with them was explaining to them that He is in all the Scriptures. Wouldn't it have been something to have been part of that Bible conference? Have you ever been to a Bible conference before? I have. They're always fun. You leave charged up. You learn so much. Here are these two guys, and they're walking down this road, and Jesus comes, and he opens the Scriptures, and he says, now let me show you. He says, it's all about me. He says, open your eyes. Do you see this? This is about me. Now, they still don't know it's him yet. And Jesus is, it says he was going to just keep on going a little further as they got to their place where they were going to stay. But he said, hey, would you, would you stay with us a little longer? Come, the, it's, it's late, come on in, have dinner with us. And so Jesus comes, and then while they're there at the dinner table, Jesus breaks the bread, and then it was at that moment that they, he's revealed, and they see who it is. And it's Jesus. And when they see him, he departs from them immediately. Wow, that's an incredible story. An incredible account of, of just this miraculous thing that Jesus is doing in these guys' lives. But, but here's what you, I want you to see as we look at that story. It, it's right there. Jesus says the Bible is all about him. That's what he says. He says the Bible is all about him. So our first point today, the Bible has everything to do with walking with Jesus. The Bible has everything to do with walking with Jesus because the Bible is all about Jesus. Adrian Rogers said, if you have read your Bible and don't find Jesus, you've missed it. Go back and read again. You will find him. Let's not take Adrian Rogers' word for that, though. Instead, let's look at what Jesus himself has said. Back to that verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. There's 39 Old Testament books. There's 27 New Testament books. There's at least 40 different human authors of these books of the Bible written over a span of at least 1,600 years from different backgrounds and ways of thinking. Yet God is the divine author who has empowered those human authors to pen and write his very word for us to read and it's and it's a perfect word without error and it is sufficient and guess what from genesis to revelation it all has one story it's the story of redemption and jesus is the hero and so from genesis to revelation it's all about jesus and we need to understand that when it comes to our bible that's why you don't do away with the old testament why it's all about jesus it's god's word that's why you don't throw one one book or one passage out of your scripture. Why? Because it's about Jesus. It's the word of God. In Genesis, Jesus is the son of God who is going to bruise the head. He's going to deliver a conquering blow to the, the head of Satan. He's going to crush his head and he's going to do this through the cross, winning it in victory and in resurrection. In Revelation, Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. What he is saying is this. Jesus is saying, I am the first word and I am the last word. Jesus is the word. You, do you hear me today? The Bible is all about Jesus. You say, what would Jesus tell me if he came and he walked with me today? I believe he would tell you what he told these guys. He would tell you the scriptures. You know why? Because they're all about Jesus. John 5, 39, you might just want to jot that down. Here's what it says. It says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is them that bear witness about me. What's Jesus say? The scriptures bear witness about him because the Bible, the scriptures, they are about 
Jesus. They bear witness about Him. From Genesis through Revelation, the Bible is the story of Jesus and salvation that comes in Him alone. And His desire for all people to trust in Him for salvation. How do you know Jesus without the Bible? Ask yourself that question. How do you know Jesus without the Bible? You may run into somebody, you may think this may be in your own life. You say, I don't need the Bible because I've got Jesus. How do you know Jesus without the Bible? The answer is pretty simple. You don't. You don't. Salvation is revealed through the Bible. That's why it says in 1 Peter that the Word of God will stand forever. It's the Word of God. It reveals the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to just hold your place in Luke and turn with me to Romans. I want to read this to you. Romans chapter 10. Starting in verse 13, here's what it says. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to take the Bible's word for it. Here's what it says. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What a wonderful verse of Scripture. Did you hear me? Let me say it again. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you're here today and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, the Bible says if you will call upon his name, he will save you. If you'll turn to him for salvation, you will be saved. It says in verse 14, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us now i've got we got one other verse i'm going to read but but listen saying how are they going to believe if they've not heard how are they going to hear unless someone is sent how are they going to hear unless the preacher preaches and what is he going to preach what's that person going to say what's going to come out of that mouth what is the word that's going to make the difference in a person's life the word of god The Word of God. The message of Christ. And that's what it says there in verse 17. Listen, it says, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. The Word of Christ. The Bible. It's all about Jesus. And so we, in order for us to have a relationship with Jesus and to to know God and to have salvation, we can only make that decision by hearing what it is that God has to say to us and He has given us His Word. That's why the Bible is so, so important. Now, do you have to open up a physical copy of Scripture in order to lead someone to Jesus? No, you don't have to do that. But you know what you have to tell somebody if you're going to lead them to Christ? The Word of Christ. You've got to tell them the Word of God, the truth of God. You have to do that. You have to say, Jesus is the Savior. Jesus loves you. That God so loves the world that He sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins. That you have salvation if you will trust in Him for these things. You have to tell them the Word of God in order for someone to trust in Christ to be saved. See, you came to faith by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's the way God has designed it. If you're going to grow in your walk with Jesus, I I believe that's where many of us in this room are today. I hope you have a desire to grow in your walk 
with Jesus. If you're going to do that, if you're going to know Jesus more, do you want to know Jesus more? I hope you want to know Jesus more. If you're going to know Jesus more, then you're going to need to know your Bible. You're going to need to know your Bible. Maybe you don't know Jesus as well as you could know him because you don't know the Bible very well. You want to walk with Jesus? You want to get to know him more? You want to grow as a Christian? We know where to find him. He's in the word of God. All throughout the Bible. So that brings me to the second point. Jesus wants you to walk with him through your Bible. I truly believe this with all of my heart. Jesus wants you to walk with him. He wants to teach you. He wants to show you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to uplift you. And he wants you to walk with him through your Bible. You probably heard someone say that we need to walk with Jesus. Have you ever heard, I mean, other than this morning, have you ever heard somebody say that? I, I need to walk with Jesus. You know, you, do you see, it's one of those, it's one of those, um, I guess, fads now, decorations. Every, everybody has one. It's like, I need, give me a little bit of this and, and give me some Jesus. That's all I need, which... Those kind of miss it a little bit. I, I know you probably have one of those. I'm saying, you know what I need? All I need is Jesus. That's all I need. Do, do you want some of Jesus? Do you need some of Jesus today? Let me tell you where you're going to get some of that. Get into your Bible, and you're going to get as much Jesus as you need. Because he's all in it. The, the whole Bible, it's all about Jesus. And Jesus wants you to walk with him through your word. So you, you've probably heard people say, we need to walk with Jesus. But how do I walk with Jesus when Jesus is on the throne in heaven? How do I do that? I believe to answer that question, we look at this passage of Scripture. I, I believe when we answer the question, why did Jesus walk with these two disciples without them knowing that it was Jesus, I believe when we answer that, we're going to find out how it is we walk with Jesus, even though we know Jesus is on the throne in heaven. So, so why did Jesus do that? Why did Jesus walk with them without them knowing it was him till the very, very end? I believe he was, there was a lot of things he was doing, but one of the points he was making, I believe, is so that he could show them himself in all the scriptures. He could show them himself in all the scriptures. Soon Jesus would ascend and be on the throne until he comes back again. How were they going to then walk with Jesus? Of course, he's sending his Holy Spirit to live and dwell inside of their lives, but how are they going to walk with Jesus? By walking with him through his word. It says, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Jesus showed them himself in all the scriptures. So, I believe also, so that we, listen to me, so that we would open our Bibles knowing it is sufficient, and we will find him there. So that we would open our Bibles. Did you see what he, those guys said after Jesus left there? In that verse 32, they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? What does it say? While he opened to us the scriptures? Church, Jesus has opened the scriptures to us. He has given us his complete and final word. It is beyond a blessing. Every single one of us in here 
have the capabilities to have a copy of the entire word of God with us today. You don't have a, you don't have a, a, a Bible like this. If you have a smartphone, they got all kinds of apps. You can get the Bible app, and you can have almost every version. I mean, ESV, King James, New King James, New American Standard, right there just for free. Every word of the Word of God that Jesus has opened, and the mystery has been revealed. It was a mystery, but the mystery has been revealed. And what, what's the answer to the mystery? It's all about Jesus. That salvation comes through Christ alone, by grace, through faith. It's amazing. As a, I don't know if you had this experience, but for me, as a, as a kid... We had a bunch of neighborhood kids. We loved to, to be with one another, to play, to just have fun, to interact in relationships with one another. And we had a bunch of kids in our neighborhood, and one of the things that went on is sometimes you just never knew where everybody was going to be. You know, one day they might be over here. One day all the kids might be gathered over there at this house or in this part of the woods or in that tree house or whatever the case may be. But, but, and so sometimes you would leave your house and you would have to go on a search and you would, because you wanted to find them. And so you would go maybe from house to house, from location to location until eventually you found where it is that they were. When it comes to Jesus, we know exactly where he is. You want to walk with Jesus? You want to fellowship with Jesus? We know where He is. He's opened the Scriptures to us. Open up your Bible. There He is. The Bible, it's all about Jesus. Do you need to grow in your walk with Jesus? By growing in your walk through His Word, you're going to grow in your walk with Jesus. Let me just give you a couple things to think about. Here's a few things that happen when you walk with Jesus through your Bible, okay? Jesus will encourage you. Do, do you these are some reasons why you need to walk through your Bible with Jesus. Jesus will encourage you. Jesus will teach you. Jesus will change you. Jesus will convict you. Jesus will guide you. Jesus will give you what you need. And some of you need something right now. And you're searching for it in so many different places. In, in what the Word of God is calling out to you, Jesus is saying, come here, walk with me, and I'm going to give you everything you need. I'm going to read for you something. We're basically to the end, but I've got a couple guys, and we're doing a study together, just daily devotions through the book of James. And I, I won't let you in this too far, but th this is my current journal for my devotions right here. I, do you have something like this? I hope you do. See. I, work, I walk through the Word, and then I, I write down what God is telling me, what, what I'm experiencing with Jesus. And so this, this is mine right now. And so this came out of James this last week. But th this is the kind of thing that happens when you get in your Word and you walk with Jesus. It says, here's what I wrote. Jesus, thank you for your promises. You are faithful and true to keep them. Lord, you are wisdom, and thank you for freely giving wisdom to those who ask for her. This passage confronts me, or I'm sorry, this passage comforts me to know that you can provide all the wisdom I need or ever will need in my life. God, this makes me want to live boldly and with confidence for and in you. Lord, you also remind me in this passage that I must live, think, ask, act in faith. 
Doubt causes chaos, confusion, uncertainty, but trusting in you gives me confidence. Jesus, you are my confidence. Lord, I trust in you. Give me wisdom as a husband, a father, friend, and pastor. God, give me wisdom in preaching the word. I just wanted to share that with you today for this reason. You can walk with Jesus like that every day. You can get your Bible. You can open up the scriptures that Jesus has opened up to all of us and you can read and you can study and you can see Jesus speak and pour into your life. How can you walk with Jesus? You walk with Jesus through His Word, the Bible. For some here today, maybe you need to start that walk for the very first time. You need to start that walk by trusting in Him for salvation. We read it a moment ago. God says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And you've sat through this message and you say, I need that walk. I need that relationship. Then you can turn, call out to God, repenting of your sins, saying, Jesus, save me. And he'll do that. And that will be the beginning of your walk with Christ. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Jesus, your word is good. It's true and trustworthy. In the Bible, it's all about you. God, we know that your word is always under attack. And even in our lives, the devil tries to attack what we believe about your word. But Lord, your word will never fail. It's like a rock. It stands the test of time. It will always be. It endures forever. It's your holy word. It's breathed out by your mouth. It gives life, nourishment. And Jesus, help us to trust in you and to walk with you through your word. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you as Savior, that they would make that decision.